Hey guys, in, in order to energize ourselves for the next two hours of straight presentation, before the lunch, I would like to ask you all to stand up. Come on. And when you're going to see my hands or my arms crossing, you're going to clap your hands. Is that okay? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now you got it. Yeah, now you can sit down again. Thank you. So I am Martin Villeneuve. I'm the president of this tech. Uh, I have a passion like all of us at this tech. We have a passion for building. We have a passion for controls and we have a passion for technology. Been at this tech now for 20, 24 years. I'm the employee number two, the founder of the company sold to Acuity Brands in 2016. I had the short straw. That's why I'm here. <laughs> So I'm going to take you to a journey, a journey that drive uh, of uh, uh, driving beyond the possible. So um, there has been, uh, uh, yeah, one one of the common threat of personality at this tech is to uh, always challenge challenge the impossible, and to come with a growth and to and with an innovation mindset. So that's one of the reasons we're getting along so well with Cochrane Supply and, and Scott's team. So we both like to challenge ourselves and challenge them, not accept the status quo. This quote from Mark Twain says it all. So uh, they did not know it was impossible, so they did it. It's a little bit the story of this tech. We started our journey in BMS with Lawnworks technology. By a show of hand, who have ever worked with Lawnworks technology in the, in the, in the room? Yeah, so I see probably 50% of your hand raise. So we started with that. It was really, at the beginning, uh, the most open technology or the first open technology into the building automation. But then you or they threw a curveball curve at us. They said, you're excellent in lawn, but we need backnet. So we roll up our sleeve and we became the most sold open MSTP backnet line in the market worldwide. So you see some, some of, uh, of our controller here. And that's only the first challenge that we had. Then, we started working on IP. This was back in 2013. And they told us the market is not ready for IP. At the time, I had to say they were right. But the main, the main item why, why we were told that is that we were told it's too expensive. The home run from the bay to every controller would be too expensive. We did it anyway. And we came up with a much more innovative strategy that we could daisy chain all the controller. So in doing so, we completely disrupt the BMS industry. Remember, that was the release that we've done in 2015. Cutting edge and unique features, tailor-made to meet the needs of you, system integrator in the room. But also, meeting the needs of building owner and specifier and all the technology partner that are around this ecosystem and wants to connect to it and have the information from it. So our full line of backnet controller have finally made the total job costs more economical, more effective than with a backnet MSTP line. And then we started to play with something else. They came back at us and they say, hey, what is REST API and, MQQ and MQTT for? And then we told them, that's the future. 
So I guess you can see the pattern now. From innovation ideas to question of the market, we really push the, li we really push the limit. So some, some company lives in the past. They hope that nothing changed and they can sell their product over and over again. Some lives in the present and they address issue as fast as they arise and coming at them. Some others, us together in this deck, we're creating the future. The future. We're trend setters. So every time one of our close to 400 employees is discussing with Cochrane Supply, it's bringing a lot of ideas in our mind and from this exchange, rich exchange of information and debate sometimes, yes, we debate a lot of time, Scott and team are challenging us, then we're coming more stronger after. After that, uh, we, uh, uh, some people in Europe, uh, we said some people in Europe would enjoy our product. And you know what they told us? You will never be successful in Europe. You need to have branch offices. System integrator channel network like you guys are, it's not the way to go in Europe. Well, we did it, we did it again. We are, not, we are now the number one sold controls BMS product in Europe exclusively available through system integrator such as you. Now, sorry, my, my phone is ringing and I have, a, I have a team call. It's my operation, maybe it's important. Do you mind if I take the... Can, can, we, put, can we put Elizabeth? She must be very, really important. You're busy, but I did get some bad news about a shortage on wine. And after everything we've been through these last couple of years, the team called us to make sure we could get that solved for you. Turns out the shortage was on the Merlot you had picked for the night. The sourcing department did find another wine. It's a cab that I think will be great and maybe even better than the one you had picked. Um, however, once that was solved, then we found out the bottles were delayed in transit. We found another vendor. We could source the bottles. However, they are a different shape and the bottle openers don't work that well with them. Don't worry, the R&D department stepped in. They designed a new one. They had time to test it. Everything is working just fine. Uh, they tested the wine along the way and they said that it actually tastes very good. So Martin, you should be all set for your night. My pleasure. And I will see you in Montreal next week. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. So Scott, you see, and team, you see uh, uh, prob problem are arising every day. We have the sourcing issue. We have the massing sourcing issue in all the industry just after the, pan the, the pandemic. I'm proud to say that this tech and this tech team have been one of the best in managing that. So we had almost no uh, product interruption but it's exactly what happened every day. There was always an issue, a transportation issue, a chip issue that we needed to redesign. Half of our R&D team for about a year and a half worked on lonely redesigning, making sure that we understood that you are on job site, you needed to close it before to have your money. So uh, thank you for bearing with us, but I think we were, uh, we were really good on that. So continuing, uh, con continuing in Europe, yeah. The fact, that, uh, the fact that we were able to open up the market with system integrator channel like you have unlocked the building owner of being locked with proprietary solution and a branch office that were carrying only one, one line. So we made the service uh, much more uh, cost effective in that way. So then they told us, Unified room controls with lighting and sunblind and multi-sensor won't work in North America. It's too much, it, it's too much uh, there's too much a division between all, a division between the division of electrical and mechanical. So, they were right. <laughs> that, 
Although it's a product that is sold every day in, in Europe and it's driving energy costs down, in North America, it's pre pretty tough. We have it av available. If you guys want to implement a job with a maximum of, of energy saving, you can do it with the solution. But it's uh, kind of difficult to align the electrical and mechanical contractor with the general contractor to, uh, uh, to install it, even though the end user loves it and, and beg us to, uh, to provide it to them. Next, with all those great innovation, this tech kept growing and growing. And they keep telling us, hey, you're too small to provide all the application of a building that a building needs. Only the big four can do it. So, uh, so yeah, so we said, okay. So we created what we call the digital partner program. Because our product line is so open and so connectable with other systems, we could qualify many service system provider or any kind of IoT provider that are at the edge of the BMS product to connect to our product. So both companies, them and us, came together, test a solution, and made sure that we could service an end user the way they want to be service. We cannot be the best at everything in a building. A one manufacturer cannot be the best at everything. And that is why we have created the uh, Digital Partner Program. If you want to know more about it, you can come at, at our boot, and uh, some of the DISTEC employees are going are to be happy to talk about it. Then they ask us, what are you going to work next? And then we told them, AI. AI is a big subject that you heard about today. The release of ChatGPT back in December was important in the market. But I just want to let you know that we release a controller that have AI capabilities a year ago. So it means that this was in our R&D desk probably four years ago. So this is what we do at this tech. We're trying to predict where the market is going to go and what is going to be the future need. And then they immediately told us, hey, Edge is, is, is not powerful enough to handle AI. It must be in the cloud. And like I said, I'm happy to say that we have released Apex Controller with cloud capability in a Docker, uh, with, uh, with uh, not only AI capability, but cloud connectivity. Docker container. Everybody knows what is a Docker container in a, in a, in a hardware, in a PC hardware environment by a show of hand. Yeah probably 10% of the room. Docker container, I've been, on, I've been on the technology market for about, I would say, five years. It's been used tremendously into the computer industry, into the rack mount industry. So this is where, where you want to build an application, a contained application, and you want to make it run on an embedded devices without having to contact the manufacturer of this embedded devices. So th that is why we call it Docker. So an Apex, for example, imagine that there's many Dockers in which you can put a container that will run. So this is a software metaphor to explain that. Imagine before you had a computer in the mechanical room that was there and people uh, of the BMS were trying to install an application. Other people would come and install another uh, application, and it was not remote accessible, and it was not rugged in a way that it could work in a panel. So this is displacing this computer in a panel, making sure that you can run multiple application inside of the same hardware. And this is making you 
this is making available the AI fun fun functionality. I don't know who knows the GFX tool, the graphical programming interface that we use in this tech to program HVAC. So by a show of hands, GFX. Yeah, there's much more people that know about GFX. So if you're asking the next whiz kid, hey, can you program me something in order to maximize the use of AI in the disk tech controller, do you think they would know GFX? Most probably not. GFX is a tool for HVAC programmer. However, they would know a lot of other tools on the market like Node-RED, Kubernetes, all any other type of tools. So they would install this in a container inside of a disk tech Apex and then they would get access to the AI. And then inside of it through REST API or MQTT or BACnet, they would transfer the information to the GFX to be used for. So yes, we can find a lot of application using AI in the BMS industry. I can just name one. Who likes to tune a PID loop? So nobody sits in front of a computer and say, hey, I'm gonna adjust the proportional band and integral, no, we'd have no time to do this. We, we keep the manufacturer default. But are those default the right ones? Most probably not. It's been a long time since we checked. So AI is gonna be able to help us fine tune those applications. So that's one application. But every one of you can have a job site that you want to do all sort of other crazy thing with AI that is not necessarily related to only the controls of BMS. So that's why we've built that in a container, Docker environment, being able to use by you. And like Scott was mentioning at the beginning, you need to have IT guys on your staff. And when you're gonna have those IT guys, you're gonna tell them, hey, this tech is having Docker, he's gonna say, yeah, perfect, give it to me. So that's gonna bridge the OT world and the IT world. So this is, this is not only a uh, one of the most powerful BMS controller on the market with connectability with 320 IOs and all the chibang, but it's also an IoT beast, beating anything of the, of the rack mount PCs on the market. Now, for many years, we sold and developed energy dashboard. And they told us, hey, energy dashboard is not interesting anymore. A building owner aren't asking for this. We talk today about the energy crisis. We talk uh, uh, energy projects are popping up all around the world now. And uh, I'm going to tell you, but you should know that we have the platform. We have the platform, which is called Atrius Building Insight. Atrius Building Insight is not only an ESG, it's not only an, an energy dashboard, but it's also an ESG dashboard that we talked about for uh, three levels, uh, three scopes, scope one, scope two, scope, scope three. So you building system integrator are now having access to the C-suite of the Fortune 500 company in order to go speak with them and say, hey, I'm the BMS guy, I manage your energy, I'm reporting your energy, but not only, I can report on your entire business on ESG. So you have even more relevance to your business in your customer base. And now you're going to love this one. They told us that system integrator cannot, make, cannot do big job in North America. It's only for branch office. Don't even... Don't even look at them. Because we believed in you, some of the biggest projects in North America today are achieved by System Integrator using the Distech Controls product. So you can see on your left, it's a spiral building in Hudson Yard in New, in New York. Definitely the biggest pro project on Manhattan. CIBC Square in Toronto. Biggest project in, in construction that was in construction over the last five, five years in Canada. JPL, uh, NASA, they flat spec this tech, and uh, in order to be able to do so, they had to have three available system integrator in order to get pricing 
competitive pricing, but instead of having competition between three brands, now you, uh, one of the system integrator was sure to win it, and so on. Closer to us, these projects you should know because it's really close to here. So Bedrock Hudson Building was done with this tech. Ford Motor, the hub building. Uh, Cleveland Browns headquarter and the White Castle headquarter. If I continue, Toledo, Toledo Museum of Heart, GM World headquarter has a lot of this tech product and the Pentagon is, this is confidential, Scott did not authorize me to say it. Not allowed to talk about it, so you've never seen it. <laughs> so you can see the pattern. Some live in the past. They want to sell you the same product over and over again. Some live in the present. They just challenge the current issue. Some live in the future like we do. Imagine this. We were comfortably installed into lawnworks industry, and we were selling more and more of that. And we, we have obsolete ourselves. We have made self-obsolescence with BACnet MSTP, and we did it again with BACnet IP. It was a big risk for us. But now, today, BACnet IP, the Eclipse line, is more than 60% of our sales. So imagine if we would have never done it. We wouldn't have those 400 employees that are con constantly uh, developing new product uh, as well. So, one more thing. As a company, when uh, we like to, to develop everything by ourselves, especially when it's close to our core, everything BMS related, everything uh, uh, that goes into, uh, into the uh, eating, air conditioning, uh, but there was one thing missing. And when it's missing, when something is missing, like we did in Europe with the smart room controls, we go by acquisition. So I'm proud to announce, if you haven't seen on the news so far, that the blue box just got a little cooler. We have announced uh, a week and a half ago the acquisition of K2 Term, a leader in digital control in refrigeration. We believe that refrigeration is about to live a, ma to live a major transformation from a refrigerant point of view, so there's going to be a change to natural refrigerant. And this is the, when it's installed in the building, it's the biggest energy consumer of the building. So there's a lot to save there. And all the retailers that have uh, compliance with ESG knows about it. So it's really uh, the right time now to integrate with refrigeration controls. We're gonna start, start we're, we're gonna talk with Scott, this is really recent, on how it's gonna be made available to you, if it's made available and in what shape or form, but I'm really excited about this acquisition. Now let's talk about the future a, l a little bit. And let's look at some of, the stuff, some of the stuff we are developing in different arenas. So first, the arena of controllers. In 2014, you experienced the beginning. Sorry. Starting it back again? No. In 2014, you experienced the beginning of Eclipse, a connected controller series that set the benchmark for connectivity and openness in intelligent commercial buildings. Since then, Additions to the Eclipse line have increased flexibility and connectivity to various equipment control applications. Open new doors facilitating integration with third-party systems, responded to the ever-changing security challenges, and added productivity tools, easing deployment. A next generation of Eclipse is around the corner.
So Eclipse have already started to be the de facto standard into IP, into BACnet IP technology, and we again have made the version two, so we are gonna obsolete ourselves again, even though we believe we are one of the leader in that. Now let's listen what we have, what we're doing into the sensor. Everything you can sense, now the sensor can too. So that was on the sensor, and uh, the last video I have is on the Atrius Building Insight platform, which is an energy and ESG dashboarding. So. It's time we expect more from modern spaces. More innovation, more experience, more humanity. The ability to sense, think, and act like us for us. Real intelligence, the kind that helps people do everything we do better. Even making it work on the move. Space is enabled to help us live better, work smarter, play harder, and achieve more than we ever thought possible. The era of passive spaces ends here. Atrius is delivering the future, where connected spaces take an active role in becoming more sustainable, streamlining business operations, and reshaping people's experiences. The places we occupy aren't just four walls and a ceiling. Our software is redefining what spaces are capable of from the ground up. We're breathing life into your existing building infrastructure with AI-assisted, human-facilitated, data-driven action. Why? For you. We're connecting and empowering physical spaces so you can experience more of everything that makes you whole, everywhere you are. Step into the new paradigm for intelligent spaces that sense, think, and act. Experience Atreus. Don't leave now. There's a QR code, so a little bit more sophisticated than uh, Etrit. Instead of a business card, it's a QR code. Sorry, Etrit. <laughs> uh, if you scan that, that's going to bring you to a place where you're going to be able to input your name, and we're going to send uh, a T-shirt to your home that you're going to be able to wear uh, on uh, as you wish. And one of the, uh, of, of the cool thing is that uh, for everyone who registered that and there and receive a t-shirt, we're going to make a draw, and we're going to make a draw of a trip to our headquarters in Montreal for a couple days in order to visit the R&D and visit the production area. So this is available to all of you uh, Cochrane Supply customers. And that was it. Thank you very much for your attention. Well done, well done, Martin. Um, so real quick, I, I couldn't help, I, I was just thinking about this. So like when, I, when we first started working together, remember you're like, well, Scott, you know, we got a lot of people buying the backnet MSTP, but not a lot buying the Eclipse. And uh, I'm like, well, Martin, that's all I want is the Eclipse. And you're like, wonderful, We're, you know? Anyways, you know, that was a long time ago. Can you speak to the convergence like of IP I mean, you guys were an innovator in it. You've seen it from the beginning with, with Eclipse. Mm -hmm. What's that acceleration curve looking like these days in terms of adoption for IP? It, uh, well, like, like I said, now it's about 65% of our sales. Yep. And when we released it in 2016, uh, it was 0%. So this curve was, was uh, slowly going from probably zero to five to 10. And now it's living uh, a steep acceleration. 
And so what's your prediction for this year and, and you know, the next couple years with that adoption? First, it's, um, it's, it's eating a lot of the lawn share. So uh, lawn are getting, is getting a little bit old and it was, uh, this is a business that was sold three times over the last five years and people have, lose, have lost a little bit uh, trust. So uh, IP is eating all the, uh, the share of lawn, definitely worldwide. Okay. And slowly but surely eating the space, eating the, the share of BACnet MSTP. So my prediction, well, I don't know for the entire market, but certainly at this tech, 80% of our sales uh, should be attainable soon. Gotcha. Crazy. Very cool. Okay, folks, we got just a few minutes. Questions for Martin? In the audience, Glenn, you still there? No? Any questions? No? You guys are ready for happy hour, I can tell. All right, well thank you, Martin, that was awesome.